What's up guys? Uh, I just wanted to make a quick video to talk about the coronavirus situation. Um, as a traveler, it's it's been on my mind a lot the past couple weeks, seeing the news every day, seeing the updates. And as I know there's a lot of travelers who watch this channel, maybe it's been on your mind as well. Now I don't want to speak about too many numbers in this video because the number of cases are always changing and you can find that information on your own. But just for context, in case someone is watching this video two months into the future, today is February 8th. There are currently about 35,000 cases. Uh, unfortunately, 725 people have passed away. Of course, the majority of these cases and fatalities are in mainland China, but we are starting to see spread of the virus in other countries. Just today, we had five new cases in France. We had seven new cases in Thailand one in Taiwan, um, one in Malaysia. So we're starting to see new countries be affected as well. And as I see it, there are two different opinions that we have on the internet right now, or at least the two loudest opinions on the internet. On the one hand, we have people who are saying that this is all just a big media hoax. Like we shouldn't even pay attention to this because more people die every year from the flu, which is true, the common flu does kill a lot of people every year. Um, but I do have some issues with this opinion. Uh, but on the other hand, we have people who think that, you know, th this is gonna send us all back to living in caves. This is the apocalypse. You need to stock up six months food and water as soon as you can because things are about to get crazy. And this opinion I think is, I mean, people can think whatever they want, but I don't think it's very likely. I think there's a lot of like fear and a lot of even trolling. Like, I don't even know if everyone on this side actually believes the things they're saying. But in my opinion, the, 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 to believe that it's just another flu and that everything is normal is also the wrong way to see things because I mean, there are tens of millions of people in China right now, the, the state of the state with Wuhan, the city of Wuhan, I think it's pronounced Hubei, Hubei, currently locked down. That's about 40 million to 50 million people who are only leaving the house to visit the hospital or to buy groceries. Like other than that, you are, you are locked down. So that is a pretty, pretty intense measure. And I've been hearing reports that other cities like Beijing and Shanghai, they're also entering into lockdown mode. So clearly China, who is closest to the virus, are taking it, they're taking it extremely seriously, uh, costing their economy billions of dollars. I mean, it's, it's major steps that are being taken. So of course the situation is evolving. We don't know exactly what is happening, but in my view, to kind of naively think that everything is okay, this is just another flu, I think that's the wrong approach to take to go into panic mode and to start like stocking up groceries and you know telling everyone that this is the apocalypse. I think that is also the wrong approach to take. In my opinion, there is a middle ground uh, and let's talk about what that means as a traveler. So first of all, as a traveler, you should take extra precautions not to spread the virus, um, whether you are healthy or not. And, and one thing I've heard a lot of people say is that, you know, if you are young and healthy, you have nothing to worry about because this disproportionately affects people who, who are older or people who have autoimmune disorders. And that is true. But I also think that's a very selfish opinion to take because let's say you're from the United States or Canada and you travel to a country and you pick up the coronavirus and you travel home well, now you're at risk of affecting people from those groups who it can be very, very serious for. Uh, it becomes, when you're a traveler, it becomes much more than just you because you are visiting new places. So you are, you are the exact sort of person who would be spreading the virus to places that are currently unaffected. And also I think, uh, I think this is the, the worst time to make jokes about coronavirus. Uh, I know the internet likes to make jokes and like make everything into memes, but uh, I don't know if you guys heard the case of the Canadian <laughs> flying from Toronto to Jamaica. And he was on this flight and in the middle of the flight, he stood up, he, he took his phone out 
Where's my phone? He took his phone out and he started doing a video uh, on the plane saying, Hey guys, I just flew back from Wuhan. Oh, I don't feel so good. <laughs> and he was trying to get like a viral video, right? But what happened was everyone else on the plane started freaking out. Uh, understandably so. <laughs> and the aircraft, they actually turned it around, went back to Toronto. So everyone on the plane ended up losing a day of their vacation because they couldn't fly to Jamaica. And he was arrested in Canada. And who knows what will happen next. But honestly, I think whatever punishment they have for that guy is not enough because that's just about the stupidest thing you could ever try to do. So yeah, let's not joke too much about the coronavirus. Even if it hasn't affected you or anyone you know, um, like we're living in a global world, you know? So like there could be people you're connected to who are connected to it in some way. Um, in fact, I actually met when I was backpacking in India last year, I met a, a, a backpacker from mainland China and she is from Wuhan. Um, I, I got in touch with her after the coronavirus thing happened just to see how things are going. I, I didn't actually know what city she was from. I just sent a message saying that, you know, I've been hearing about the virus. I hope your city is not too affected. And she wrote back saying that she is from Wuhan. And she is currently traveling in Thailand. So she is not in Wuhan, but her sister is in Wuhan and her family is from Wuhan. Um, so obviously it's very tense times for her family and for a lot of families out there. So for me, that just showed me that, oh, okay, suddenly I have like a face to put to this whole situation, you know, because if you don't have a face or you don't have anyone, you know, it's really easy to look at statistics and just kind of like, it doesn't mean anything. It's just numbers every day. It's just numbers like 5,000 new cases. Like, what does that actually mean? But once you know someone who's infected or someone who's, you know, um, implicated in the situation in any way, it kind of changes how you think about it. So for me, that was a big moment. And I, I also want to talk about, so last year, speaking of the India trip, um, people who have been watching my channel for a year or more, you will know that after India, I actually had to cut that trip short because I had swine flu. I caught swine flu when I was in India last year. So I haven't really been filming anything the past week for obvious reasons. Uh, and maybe it's from that experience that I'm reacting strongly to this coronavirus stuff because I know the feeling of contracting a very serious disease in another country. Um, I got hospitalized because of swine flu I was traveling on my own. I was incredibly low energy. I was incredibly worried for a couple of weeks there. And just doing anything when you're in a state where you're that sick is very problematic. Uh, it, it can also be scary to get healthcare in a foreign country where you're not sure how good the healthcare might be. Um, in different countries, sometimes they have different languages. So you're getting medical information, but it's being translated to you. And it's just all very chaotic when you're in that situation. You're very unsure of what the right move is. So to the people who are saying like, don't worry about coronavirus because you're young, you're not going to die. I would say that that might be true. But as I said earlier, you could infect other people who it's very serious for. And also if you get infected, like that's no walk in the park. It's, it's, I mean, I'm not saying swine flu is the exact same as, as the coronavirus. I don't know exactly what it would be like. But based on the reports, coronavirus would be extremely serious as well. So I would just say don't underestimate how bad an experience it is to get very sick in a foreign country. Um, yeah, so th those are the reasons why I would say pay very close attention to this if you're a traveler and don't just treat it as business as usual. Now, on the other hand, is it time to cancel all trips to, to Asia? If you have a trip planned in the next couple months to Thailand or to Vietnam or to Hong Kong or to any of the places that are outside of mainland China right now, uh, which I, I would not recommend anyone to travel to mainland China at the moment. Um, 
I know it's an, I know it's a huge region. I know some areas are more affected than others, but from all the reports I've seen, things are getting very, very serious in China. So I would avoid that region. As for other countries, it's too soon to start canceling trips, in my opinion. One thing I would recommend is you should get uh, medical supplies before you arrive, because places where the cases are starting to rise, it can be very difficult to get even basic supplies like hand sanitizer or like face masks. Uh, so if you can, it's probably a good idea to get those in your home country before taking the trip, just to be extra prepared. But yeah, I, I don't, most of all, I just, I would recommend what I always recommend about traveling and going to new places, not to act out of fear and not to start to think differently about whole groups of people. I think the, the way that people have started to stigmatize Chinese people and, you know, you see it's a very fine line between like, like not traveling to some place and then not wanting those people to travel to your country and then being openly racist against those people. It's like, it's a slippery slope. And as much as I think we need to be treating these uh, outbreaks very seriously, we also need to remember our humanity and not start thinking of different groups of people differently. Because if you look at the course of human history, like we only, we only like, let's say this does become a big epidemic and every country is suffering from the flu. It's going to be by uniting together that we actually overcome it. Like that's the only way we ever beat anything, you know, like people coming together and working together. That's how we develop vaccines. That's how we end wars. That's how we end poverty. Like any big thing that's being solved is solved by people working together, not by being afraid of each other and like not leaving the house and not leaving your country and like locking all the doors. Um, yeah, that's usually not the right move. At the end of the day, if you decide to cancel a trip to an, an affected country, uh, that's your choice. And some people might tell you you're wrong. Some people might tell you you're right. Only you can make that choice. But make sure you're acting out of a place of logic and not just in a place of, not just a place of like emotional fear. Look at the numbers assess the risk. Um, if you do take the trip, you know, act responsibly, do your best not to, to spread a virus to any other people. Um, and just, you know, treat this with the seriousness that it deserves. But don't let it stop you from living your life. Uh, let me know what you think. I don't have all the answers. Maybe you think I'm overreacting. Maybe you think I'm underreacting. There's a lot of different opinions on the internet right now. I just wanted to share mine in case this can be helpful to any travelers. And uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Peace.